Hello, my name is Jeff Dunn, and I'm the Commissioner of the Alabama Department of Corrections. This department is committed to your safety during your time with us. As part of that commitment, I want to introduce you to an important federal law called the Prison Rape Elimination Act, or PREA for short. The video you are about to watch features staff members and inmates who have agreed to talk openly and honestly about PREA and your right to be free from sexual abuse and sexual harassment and your right to be protected from retaliation for reporting sexual abuse. We will also provide you with important information about how to prevent sexual assault and sexual harassment, what to do if you are sexually threatened or assaulted, and the ways to safely report any instances of sexual abuse. I want you to understand that this department is committed to a zero tolerance policy towards sexual abuse of any kind. What that simply means is that we will not tolerate any form of staff or inmate sexual abuse or harassment and all reports will be taken seriously and acted upon. Please pay close attention to the video. We all have a role in preventing sexual abuse and creating a safe environment. Thank you. Coming down that highway in that van with other guys was a real dark place for me. When you come down Wells Ferry Road, they you, you see the big the big water tower, you know, you, and they're like, there it is. I felt alone. Heartbreak. This is it. Here I am. I'm coming to prison alone. It's, it's scary. You hear rumors about what goes on in prison, but uh, that wasn't objective. I was uh, afraid being a young teenager coming to prison for the first time. When you're getting ready to come to prison and you're sitting in the county, you hear all these amazing stories about different officers and the brass here. From the county officers telling you this is welcome to the worst day of your life. The purpose of this video is not to scare you, but to help you do your time more safely. In the making of this film, we spoke to inmates and staff. We want you to hear from real experts. The people who have lived and worked here and can help you to do your time more safely. I've done 16 years in prison. Sir, a total of 28 years in prison. And I've served 12 years. Been eight years. Been here 27 years. This is how to protect yourself from sexual assault in prison. These are steps you can take to avoid that from happening to you. You really have to know how to get by in prison. And if you don't know already, you need to catch on quickly. Many inmates that are coming in today, they are fearful of the unknown of what's behind the gates. You have some guys that, when you look at them, if you see them coming, you think that this guy is the biggest, baddest, meanest killer. Most of it is a, an act. Everybody wears a, a, a mask. They tend to be tough, but in heart, they're, they're really teddy bear. What you see on television is only one version, a hyped up version of what we actually go through. Coming into prison today is different than it was when I was 17 years old. Once you get here, it's uh, basically a small community. When I first came to prison, sexual assault was violent. Now it's done in a more psychological, emotional way now. Years ago, the system gave a blind eye to sexual assault. You had to kind of like defend for yourself or somebody had to take care of you. You can rest a little easier in, in here now. But coming into to modern day prison, as I call it, you got all kind of help. You know, you got brothers that are willing to assist you on. You got the administration uh, uh, give you help. We're starting the first line here, and notice that the line's above the title. If my nephew's coming in and he's he's young. My first advice would be, don't find a 50 year old man to hang out with. These are red flags that you should look for when you come to prison. Uh, number one, a person that you don't know that's overly friendly. Um, they would uh, appear friendly with the Bible, you know, like they were religious and, and friendly, and they would use that Bible to get a talk to, to try to talk to the young man. They'd be on this rack talking to him, and uh, they were using religion and, and that type to play up under him. That's how they got in the door. That's 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 how they 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 and then kind of gained his trust. You want to distance yourself from him. And if he continues to come back and come back and come back, that's an automatic red flag. 
somebody that claims to know you that don't really know you and you know you don't know them. Don't let nobody get your mail. Don't let nobody stand behind you on the phone. Uh, don't let nobody go in your box. Don't uh, volunteer to uh, put your stuff in other people's boxes. When a person enters prison, he has to be aware of his surroundings totally and watch who's watching him. Pay attention. You go to the shower, if you see the same face too many times, something's wrong. Every time you take a shower, he's taking a shower. That right there, that, that's an automatic red flag. If you come into prison and you don't have money, then you should keep it that way. If your folks don't send you money, eat out the chow hall. Do not borrow something that you cannot pay back. Stay away from drugs. If you're getting drugs in prison, it's expensive first, and your folks are gonna figure it out, and if they are sending you money, they're, not, they're gonna stop. And now you still got a habit, you still wanna be high. What are you gonna do? The drug dealers will figure out what you're gonna do. Let's take a moment to clarify what we mean when we say sexual abuse and sexual harassment. Sexual abuse can be between inmates or between a staff member and an inmate. Sexual abuse includes activities such as intercourse, oral sex, and any other intentional touching, either directly or through clothing of a person's buttocks or growing area. Sexual abuse is when the victim does not consent, is coerced into such act by overt or implied threats of violence, or is unable to consent or refuse. Sexual contact between a staff member and an inmate is illegal and considered sexual abuse, even if that inmate believes it to be consensual. There is also sexual harassment, which means an unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, or verbal comments, gestures, or actions of derogatory or offensive sexual nature. So you have the short con and you have the long con. The short con is, okay, I'm gonna beat you up, you are gonna be my slave. That's the short con. Where the long con is, I'm gonna protect you, I'm gonna be here for you, I'm your buddy. Well, hey, I've done all this for you, now I want you to do this for me. Guys will play basketball just to build up a sweat, but then when you get sweat, and, and, and muggy and musty, you know what I'm saying, what you got to do? You got to go take a shower. So guess what, he's there, He's there stalking you. He's there filling you out. He's getting you comfortable with, 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 with you being with him in all angles. If you're approached by another inmate and you feel that maybe they're being too friendly, maybe you should think about what their motives are. Sometimes an inmate will come to you and they'll offer you extra store items. They'll offer to be your friend. They'll talk to you about how dangerous prison life is and they'll let you know that they got your back if you need them. Then they will sit there and they will let you know that the only reason that nothing has happened to you so far is because they've been protecting you since you've been there. A predator will try to give you safety. They'll make you feel indebted to them, like you owe them something. He would loan you something. And uh, well, that, that one item may turn into 10 items, and that 10 items into 10 more items. A lot of times what they want in return is sex. The best way you can protect yourself is to be aware of what's going on around you. If you don't know what to do, if you don't feel like you can walk away from a situation, find a staff member you feel like you can trust and let them know so that we can be there to protect you while you're here. I do not believe that prisoners deserve to be sexually assaulted because they're prisoners, because they're made to feel that they deserve whatever sexual assault or whatever they get by someone that took power of them because of the shame. When you go to intervene in a situation where someone has been sexually assaulted or about to be sexually assaulted, you want to catch that before it becomes an assault. I was a witness of a sexual assault when I first got into prison in 99. I encourage all guys, you feel like there's something that's wrong, there are people that you can go to. The best advice I could offer you would, uh, would be not to let that individual get away with it. And there again, peer pressure comes into play. You, you, you have a lot of peer pressure from, your, from inmates, other inmates, that, that, and it's called snitching. It's not snitching when it's your life. So I encourage guys, if an officer do something to you, then that officer got to supervise. 
now I know in my heart I don't have to take things in my own hand. I don't have to do that. It's too many, uh, uh, it's too many avenues that I can tell a young man he can take. 10-4, make sure we keep that area secure uh, during the feeding of child. Make sure the yard is locked down. <laughs> Primary part of our job as staff is that we provide safety and security. In this role, we follow a strict guideline outlining policies and prayer to maintain professional boundaries with all inmates. While we aren't here to be your personal friend, we are committed to being fair and consistent in order to create a safe, secure, and respectful environment for all. There are several ways you can report. You can report verbally or in writing to any ADOC employee, verbally to the Institutional Prayer Compliance Manager, or write them by filing a request in the prayer box. You can also use the pre-address envelope to the investigation division that will be sent directly to them. Third-party reporters, such as family members, friends, or lawyers, may report on your behalf verbally, in writing, or by using the ADOC web link. You may also contact the public entity, not a part of the ADOC, by using inmate phone system as well as to contact the Alabama Coalition Against Rape using the inmate phone system. If you have any questions on these reporting methods or where to get these materials, see your facility prayer compliance manager. False reporting would cause the, um, the reporting agency to lose faith in the system. Yeah, so now the guy that's really getting raped, well, his life's forever changed because of what somebody else slowed the system down. When an inmate knowingly lies about a pre incident, it impacts the inmates and the staff at the facility and decreases everyone's safety. This isn't meant to deter you from reporting any suspected or actual instances of sexual abuse or harassment, but to remind you that pre allegations are taken seriously and is meant to protect you. Remember, every pre allegation will be investigated. That's his blood pressure up this morning. You weren't at one of the major prisons? We hope this never happens to you, but in the case that you are sexually assaulted, it's important to seek medical attention immediately. Do not wash your hair, shower, eat, drink, brush your teeth, smoke a cigarette, or go to the bathroom. Important forensic evidence may be collected to assist in holding the perpetrator accountable. The persons responsible will be held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. All complaints are taken seriously are thoroughly investigated and you have the right to know the outcome of our investigation. You have the absolute right to report and the right to be free from retaliation for reporting. You were sent to prison as punishment, not for punishment. Zero tolerance means zero tolerance. Sometimes people don't report on sexual assault or sexual harassment because of fear. You feel shame, you, your manhood's gone, uh, you feel violated, confused, scared. They're scared of being labeled a snitch. Inmates and convicts, I think that, that we have been deceived and manipulated about snitching. Snitching is not snitching when you're informing to save someone's life. No, that is not snitching. I share a, a kind of common bond with someone that's been sexually assaulted because darkness is darkness. I feel, I know where you're at. You know, I know uh, you're ashamed, you know what I'm saying? Uh, there's something going on in you that, that only you can identify with. But I also let them know that, you know, healing comes behind the hurt. Well, people are making it in prison because they're not overthinking all the things that people put in their heads. You need to take advantage of this time that you have with you. Realize your problems and really, really change. Take advantage of the programs that DOC has to offer. Take advantage of this time while you're in here and forget what's out there for just a while and really work on you. This is serious. When you wake up in, behind razor wire in a fence every morning in your life, there's a problem. If you're somewhere along life, we made a mistake. We, 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 we erred. We need to fix that. And, and, and not come back. And write down some of the things that you want to accomplish. You know what I'm saying? Some of the things that you want to accomplish in life. 
And don't think about being in prison. Think about outside of prison. What would you like to do? Write it down and then start setting you some, some short and some long-term goals. And then after you do that, start trying to pursue them. You know, if you spend time doing that, you won't have to worry about the other stuff that's going on because you'll dedicate your, your incarceration to pursuing what you want to do. I hope this information has been helpful to you. We want to emphasize our department's commitment to your safety. No one deserves to be sexually assaulted. And no one deserves the added burden of physical and emotional aftermath of sexual trauma. Zero tolerance means zero tolerance. This is something we can achieve by working together. If you or someone you know is being sexually abused, report it. Together, we can make our community a safer place for everyone. Thank you.